Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at impairment of value for that investment. What is the big idea? Well, simply put, when you make an investment in a debt, simply put, when you lend money, this is what, what do we mean by investment in debt? When you lend money, when you buy a bond, there's always a risk of not receiving your money. What does that mean? It means when you lend someone money, that individual may not pay you for many reasons. Maybe the company goes out of business, maybe due to economic condition, their industry is suffering. Whatever the reason is, you may not be able to get your money. It's the same concept as selling on credit. What do we mean by selling on credit? Well, remember, every time we sell on, we sell on credit, there's a risk of not receiving the full amount or a partial amount of our money. The best way to kind of start this discussion is to review the impairment of receivable. Because once you review the impairment of receivable, you understand how the impairment of debt instrument work simply put we make a sale for let's just for the sake of simplicity a sale for ten thousand dollar to abc company we debit account receivable we credit sales for ten thousand and we hope we are going to receive this amount that at some point at the end of the year we might have to estimate bad debt expense and let's assume we estimated fifty thousand dollar of bad debt expense for the company and we credit allowance for fifty thousand allowance for bad debt that at some point after we estimate we may figure out that abc company will not be paying us once abc company once we determine it's not going to pay us we are going to debit the allowance and credit the account receivable for abc company which is ten thousand and 10,000. So what happened is this receivable simply becomes, is, is, is written off and became an expense as part of the 50,000. So this is how we do the impairment for the receivable. Okay. And what we did is we learned about the, the current expected credit loss or CECL model to measure the impairment of receivable. Okay. For that investment, anything that's, you know, that investment, that securities and loans, simply put, account receivable is a form of a loan they are they, that are reported at amortized cost which is they are follow the same approach as receivable so it's very similar approach which is the current expected credit loss model that model takes into account current conditions so how do you determine how much losses to book past experience future expectations so on and so forth in the literature there's no specific instruction on how much to write to write off how much to estimate because each industry is different each company is different the economic the economic situation evolves over time and this topic impairment of receipt impairment of that investment became a front front page issue when we had the financial crisis during 2007 2008 where out of nowhere many of these debt investments became worthless so that's why now they want you to look at current condition past experience and look at future expectation when you are determining try to guess determining the amount of the loss that you have to write the amount of the loss i'm sorry the accounting treatment depends on the asset being measured and we're going to break our assets into three different types of assets the first will be receivables which we which we looked at loans which is kind of similar to receivable like notes receivable and debt securities but those debt securities are held to maturity hdm because we could have debt to maturities hdm we could have debt to maturities available for sale and we could have debt to maturities trading now if you don't know what held to maturity what you want to go back to held to maturity investment but simply put if we have receivable loans and debt securities hdm they are treated the same as receivable which is losses are recognized in net income what does that mean it means we estimate bad debt expense and we credit the allowance so this is when we estimate the bad debt expense this is where it hits the income statement then eventually we will debit allowance and credit the asset itself which we'll see in an example so simply put held to maturity debit bad debt expense credit allowance we will work an example to show you how we write down the asset itself the second asset class are debt investment that goes through other comprehensive income through other apprehensive other comprehensive income it means the gains and the losses the unrealized gain and un unrealized losses we book them through other comprehensive income the category specifically is called available for sale now available for sale they use a different model here's how we book the impairment for available for sale if the fair value is greater or equal to the amortized cost well then we don't have to worry about anything we don't have to book any losses any credit losses if the fair value is less 
then the amortized cost, then the expected credit loss is recognized in net income. Therefore, the loss will be recognized in, credit, in, in net income. However, we have to keep in mind the credit losses are limited, so you cannot book but you cannot book more than the difference between the fair value and the amortized cost. Don't worry, we'll see an example, but if you wanna write this down, write it down. So the credit losses are limited between the fair value and the amortized cost. Now the third category are trading securities and equity securities where gain and losses go through income statement. Obviously, any credit losses goes through the income statement as well. So impairment loss measure as the difference between the lower of amortized cost and fair value for dealing with debt securities lower of cost or fair value of dealing with equity security. Simply put, you look at the cost or amortized cost for that, you compare it to the fair value, you book the difference in net income. Now, the best way to illustrate those concepts is to actually look at an example with journal entries. Before we look at the example, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. I, am I provide you supplemental material. My motto is saving CPA candidates and accounting student one at a time, but I provide you with additional resources such as lectures, multiple choice, true false questions. This is a partial list of all the accounting courses that I have. My CPA resources are aligned with your Becker, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam, so it's very easy to go back and forth as well as Surgent between my course and your CPA review course. I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with their original format, original questions, with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so, take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with other, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, especially on Instagram, I'm trying to grow my following on Instagram. Let's take a look at the first example, and this is gonna be held to maturity. Adam Company holds held to maturity bond securities with a pair value, power value and amortized cost 1.5. So amortized cost 1.5. The fair value of these securities is 1.3. What does that mean? It means we think we can only collect 1.3 million of this amount. Well, here we are using again the allowance method. Therefore, once we know that that's it, we're gonna have well, that's it, we're gonna have to write down the investment. We debit the allowance 200,000, credit the debt investment 200,000. Simply put, we wrote down the investment and we reduce the allowance. Remember, sometime in the past, so sometime before this entry, we had bad debt expense recorded, okay? So keep in mind that we had some amount of bad debt expense and some amount of allowance, and now all we're doing is we're reducing the allowance and writing off the account. So this is how we write down, impair the asset itself. Now, debt investments available for sale, again, we have different rules. Let's review them real quick. If the fair value greater than the amortized cost, no credit losses is recognized. If not, if if not means a fair value is less, is less than the amortized cost, well then we have we have a loss and the impairment loss is limited to the amount that the fair value is less than the amortized cost. The best way to illustrate these concepts is to look at an, an example. So we're gonna be looking at three different independent situation, A, B, and C, and those are available for sale securities. In situation A, we have amortized cost of 2 million, fair value 2,120. Well, the first thing what we notice is fair value is greater than amortized cost. Therefore, we have no impairment of value. We are told there's an expected credit losses. There's a good chance we may not receive 120,000. That's fine. I mean, if we don't receive that 120,000, we're gonna go back to our amortized cost. But we are also told that there's an unrealized holding gain of 120,000. Well, if we have an unrealized holding gain, we're gonna have to book the unrealized holding gain, we're gonna debit. Fair value adjustment of, of 120,000, and we're gonna credit unrealized holding gain, we have holding gain of 120,000. Simply put, we don't have any impairment in this example. If anything, we have a gain, and we book the gain for 120,000, which is great. Let's take a look at the second scenario, scenario B. We have amortized cost of 2 million, fair value of 1,960,000. Well, the difference is 40,000. Remember, the loss will be limited to that, the total loss. Expected credit loss of 120, and expected credit loss recognized in net income is 40,000. Well, what does that mean? It means the, the customer may not pay up to 120,000 for the 2 million. Okay, that's fine. 
but today right now we can sell the asset if we want to because this is available for sales securities we can sell it for one million nine hundred and sixty therefore our losses should be limited to one million nine hundred and sixty therefore we debit bad debt expense forty thousand credit allowance forty thousand for situation b remember available for sale securities they're available for sale it means we can sell them if we choose to we can sell them anytime we would like to well guess what if we know let's assume that's a real situation we know that the customer is not going to pay one hundred and twenty thousand but right now we can get out of the investment sell it for one million nine hundred and sixty we get out of it rather than losing one twenty one twenty we would just sell it for forty thousand less than the amortized cost now why do we debit bad debt expense credit allowance because this situation might reverse maybe this maybe the credit worthiness uh, might improve the economic situation might improve and we can reverse it where we call debit allowance credit bad debt expense but the point is the, the only thing you will book is the forty thousand okay now situation c amortized cost two million fair value one million eight hundred and sixty now we have a total losses of one hundred and forty thousand and here's what we are told of this amount the credit losses portion is 120 120 and this should be loss uh, credit loss is 120 so the expected credit loss recognized in net income is 120 and this has to do with the credit loss credit loss means the customer is not going to pay that much now here we have basically we have to break down because we have to book 140 we are limited to 140 but we have to break it between two type of losses we have 120,000 due to credit losses it means the customers will not going to pay okay this is 120 just like the previous like just like in the previous scenario B the credit losses are 40,000 and we have a loss of 20,000 we have a loss of 20,000 that has to do with other than the credit loss economic condition general economic condition inter in interest rate overall interest rate industry conditions something has nothing to do with the credit loss of the uh, borrower and lender therefore we debit unrealized holding loss of 20,000 credit fair value adjustment 20,000 simply put this entry here situation situation C other than credit losses is the opposite of a in a we had a gain on this available for sale investment here we have an unrealized loss what should you do you should go to farhatlectures.com and look at additional MCQs to learn more about this topic it's very important that you understand this work work examples look at addi additional resources don't shortchange yourself your cpa is important your cpa is critical to your success it's a long-term investment good luck study hard and of course stay safe